God! Oh, Jesus! Welcome back to the Leroy and Lewis Kitchen, where today we're gonna make the world's greatest pork chops. This is heavy. 300 pound pig this week, folks. On this beautiful pig, first thing we're gonna do is take out this kidney fat. Luckily, it came out already separated. Into the pot it goes. Next up, we're gonna take out this here kidney. Away. Pull out any of this residual fat. And as you know, if you wanna see more about this, you can check out our hog breakdown video. Yeah, we did bacon ribs. Or the whole hog episode, where we go into a little bit more detail. Right now, I'm pulling out the tenderloin which we will save for a rainy day. Peels right on out of there. Beautiful. And because we're gonna be breaking this down into pork chops and bacon ribs, I'm gonna go through and clean out this skirt meat and everything else that's looking a little weird in here. Next up, we're gonna take off this back leg, the old ham. This is gonna go into our sausage. Oh, away she goes. Next thing we're going to do is take off this here shoulder between the ribs. One, two, three, and four. Got some feather bones on there, so we're going to bust out the old bone saw. And this, of course, will be going into our whole hog pulled pork. Away she goes. Now that we've got that ham and shoulder removed, we are left with this beautiful middle section of the pig, and we're gonna go right down the middle of it, giving us our baby back side and our spare rib side. Oh yeah! Beautiful! On this spare rib side, we're gonna find the last bone, and this is the bacon rib. We've done this in other videos, but we're gonna do it again. So we've got this whole rack of spare ribs with all of that beautiful belly meat right on top. We're gonna find the last bone, terminate that right there, which is gonna give us a beautiful piece of pork belly, which we'll save for down the road. And then the bacon rib, which I'm gonna trim up just like any other rack of spare ribs. Look at that meat. So beautiful. And there we have it, a beautiful rack of bacon ribs, ready to go on cure for this weekend. As for this baby back loin side of the pig, got a little tattoo on there, not too worried about that. You can see that this is already skin removed, which is gonna make life a lot easier. But simply enough, we're making pork chops, which is, as you know, the ribeye and New York strip of the pig. Starting on this end, the chuck end, this is where the ribeyes begin, and as you get down towards the loin section, that's where we're gonna get our New York strip style. But we're simply gonna go in between these bones here. There's a natural separation between the vertebrae, but we also have the spine running through. So I'm gonna go around and cut through this as much as I can, and then I'm gonna go through with the bone saw to make life a little bit easier. And as you may have noticed, I was leaning forward a lot on these cuts because there's a bunch of feather bones on this top part right here that run all the way across. So cutting through those right at the vertebrae should give us a perfect pork chop. The name of the game here is just some nice, clean, even cuts. We don't want to do too much sawing action. What we should be left with is an absolutely beautiful, Cole, come look at this thing. An absolutely beautiful pork chop. That's a nice one. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Nice, bud. Looking good. Looking good, bud. And if you look at this pork chop close up, you'll see a natural separation in the fat cap right here. And I'm just gonna follow that because otherwise it's gonna split while we're cooking it. And also we don't need three inches of fat on every pork chop. You can take this all the way down. But for me, that's a perfect looking pork chop. This meat right here, oh, it's like the spinalis of the pork. Looks so good. Oh my God, these look so good. You're gonna eat this. And as we get down to the uh, loin end of this here hog, you can really see the difference between the ribeye on top here and the New York strip, if you will. A lot more marbling, this top muscle. This is the pork chop you really want. And then this one, though, is still equally as tasty. Just a little less marbling, 
this muscle is getting smaller and smaller as it goes down towards the tail. But just as a reference, it's the same thing on a cow. This is the main difference between a ribeye and a New York strip. Ooh, yes, please. Let's throw these in a brine. 5% salinity in this brine. 2% apple cider vinegar going in. Handful of garlic. One cinnamon stick. Two tablespoons of Italian herbs. 5% brown sugar as well. Same weight as the salt. Oh, yay! Couple of bay leaves. Pork chops going in. Beep. Pork pile. Oh, cool. Look at this. Look at this. Just barely enough brine for full submersion. We're gonna let these pork chops brine overnight. The salt and sugar are gonna add some wonderful flavor as well as all of the herbs and spices. The acidity is gonna help tenderize the meat a little bit and into the walk and they go overnight before we cook them up. 